Hi, I'm Peter Huntoon. I'm an artist in love with Vermont. I'm on a mission to capture Vermont's beauty one painting at a time, and I'd love to share that with you. Good morning, welcome to another day in Vermont. We're here in beautiful downtown Fairhaven, Vermont. And if I wanted to play it safe today with my painting, I'd set up here around the park and find a nice, uh, calm, happy subject. But I wanna, I wanna push the limits a little bit. And my point is that uh, as artists and really any endeavor, there are points where um, we're a little nervous to take on more than we think we can handle, go after things that are outside what you think are your your uh, capabilities. So we're going to pack up, we're gonna go up the hill and tackle a very challenging subject. My mom was born in that house right there. I just opened up my palette and it's cracked. The glass is cracked. So uh, we're gonna have to uh, roll with the punches. Hope it doesn't crack anymore or shatter. Um, but I am gonna paint anyway, I think. That's pretty jagged. I, I had a feeling that might happen because there's a, a slight bow in the bottom of that thing. You ever see the show MacGyver? We're gonna have to improvise here. So, this is the board I used to paint on, but it's gonna become my palette today. Here she comes. just loose and almost came flying off. You really are flirting with disaster here. So I did do a little sketch at home from a photograph I took uh, I think two weeks ago. It's, it really is shorthand it just gives me an idea of where where the placement of things are so I, i'm not going into this stone cold i'm kind of a, a nut when it comes to collecting pencils but you know one of the simplest ones i've come across are these cheap joe pencils they come in a set of five and they're all different softness when i do sketch outside i often use these these pencils so i use the 6b for sketching but i also use the 4h which is a very hard uh, graphite for signing my prints uh, and it goes all the way up to 8B. I've come by here so many times and it's always fascinated me because it's it's different. It's uh, there's a lot of contrast. There's that dip in the hill which I'm I'm trying to to capture all the uh, complexity of shapes and interlocking 
uh, integration of all that stuff excites me as a as a painter, as a, a draftsman, but also a personal connection is strong. As my mother was born right here in Fairhaven, and uh, 200 yards down these railroad tracks, I used to uh, flatten pennies on, on the railroad track when I stayed at my aunt's house, and she'd cook me cube steak and give me pie for for dessert. So all that hopefully factors into this uh, this painting when I'm done. My focus is so, so into the painting, I don't really pay too much attention about the traffic, but it's good training in that if you can paint under the harshest, fiercest. Hey, Doug! That's the, uh, the pedal steel player in my old band. Hey, what's going on, man? How are you doing? <laughs> doing good, doing good. Good! What's with the cane, Pete? That's to steady my hand when I get into detail stuff. All right, let's put in some, a little bit of sky here. I've been successful in my quest to challenge myself, certainly uh, challenging. My sense is that uh, it's got a lot of potential. I, I, I'm barely in control. I'm barely uh, keeping it together, but I, I am keeping it together. Thanks very much for joining me here in Fairhaven, Vermont for another beautiful day in Vermont. See you again. Today we're at uh, Middlebury Falls. It's a formidable subject for a small canvas, but we're gonna we're gonna try to simplify things. I really like the way the light's coming down, hitting that tree that's just coming into foliage now. That nice yellow is going to make a nice uh, accent point. That's going to be my first order of business. I could just sit here watching it for, for an hour before I start, but we better get busy. Light's coming in there just so nice. I want to get it all, but there's no way. In 
any painting there's areas of, I don't want to call it struggle, but certainly hard work. Moments where I'm not sure this is going to work out. But if and when it does, boy, that's a, that's a wonderful feeling. Stopping and smelling the roses, right? Definitely. All right. To me, Middlebury is a great example of a vibrant Vermont town with, uh, with the arts, with education, and plenty of natural beauty, of course. with painting is you sit and you observe and certainly you paint and as you paint you you build a relationship with the subject brief as it may be it's it's quite intimate it's quite personal and it's more than a, a casual glance walking by taking it in is one way to look but to, to sit and paint is to observe you often pick up things that you wouldn't often uh, notice and I think that's part of what I enjoy most about painting. This will be a painting of a covered bridge and I'm pretty excited about getting started so come on and join me. One of the questions I get very often is do you work from photographs? And yes, I work from photographs, but I also work from imagination and uh, sketches that I do on location or, or any other source of uh, good raw material. One of my favorite quotes regarding this whole idea of uh, inspiration is from Mike Svab, a wonderful painter from Canada. He said, go looking for inspiration. Find subjects that speak so strongly to you that you can't wait to paint them. Immerse yourself in the energy of the location, and then it won't matter how you bring it home alive. Sketches, studies, or photos, just as long as your passion is stirred. Put that into your paintings and just see what happens. That's a wonderful quote that kind of sums up uh, the idea of a photo is just one tool of many. It's really the experience that an artist is after. And if you can harness that energy, that enthusiasm, that passion, and put it into your paintings, uh, the photo really doesn't uh, matter anymore. We're, we're after art. So we're going to take these, these very simple tools, brushes with hair on the end and some simple colors, and try to make a new reality. And uh, I can't wait to get started. I went to the bridge with the 
with the intention of getting down here, but the snow was so deep a couple of weeks ago, I, I couldn't get down there. I didn't have snowshoes. And uh, I met this wonderful lady walking her dogs on the bridge, Avis, a new friend, and uh, I explained what I was doing. And she said, well, I had a friend here a couple of weeks ago who uh, did have snowshoes and took these pictures. So Avis's friend, Wilson, she put me in touch with him and he emailed me these photos. So this uh, is really a collaboration of uh, newfound friends and I, I wanted this side view as opposed to the view looking down the, uh, the bridge like I normally paint. My goal is not to copy these, these photos as is. That's, uh, that's not enough inspiration for me, a, a photo. So it's more about the experience. Obviously, I've used pieces of both photographs plus my own imagination and interpretation. I've got, you know, the composition. I, I like this lead in here from this particular photo, but I like the, the, the bridge pushed back a little bit. Stopped by the old Gates farm on my way home yesterday and met Adam and he was very gracious and uh, I asked permission to come paint his beautiful farm today. I don't know what we're going to paint today but it's going to be good. hardest uh, task today is deciding not what to paint but what not to paint. I'm drawn to this tractor against that barn. So for the next two hours we're going to be doing a little dance, a dance with the paper and the paint and the subject. There's so much good stuff going on here, I'm going to have to be selective in what I want to focus on. There's these gorgeous, gorgeous flowers leading up to the tractor, the barn, and then the, uh, the farmhouse in the distance. Sunflowers are clamoring for attention over there. Might be almost too much to put in, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Talk about dancing, those, those little white millers dancing around those flowers. I've got to put a couple of those in.
tractor. I can see the top top of it, but I'm going to uh, take some artistic license and add a little bit more than I can see. Luckily, I've painted a few tractors, so I know I know what they look like. I can't think of a better way to spend a morning than that. What I've taken here, I, I hope I've captured a little bit of the essence, the truth, a little bit of the integrity of not only this scene, but of Vermont. Welcome to another day in Vermont. We're here at the uh, Pulteney Public Library. And tonight I am going to paint Moss Glen Falls. It's up on Route 100 between Hancock and Waitsfield. It's this beautiful, beautiful falls that I ran into last week. And here are a couple of photographs that I'll be working from. It's, even though it's right on the side of the road, it's, it really is a wilderness area up there. Two of the most charming waterfalls in Vermont have the same name, Moss Glen Falls in Stowe and this one in Granville. This waterfall is a gorgeous horsetail with thin streams of water which choose their path down a slightly angled rock face. The falls start out by bubbling down over some short steps. I can barely see that in the photo but I can see it and that's what I'm going to focus on. It's before spreading out to dance down into a light teal pool about 20 feet wide. So this is a really nice uh, description of the falls. So. I look forward to getting started. This is one of those techniques, oh, this is fun. And then before you know it, your whole canvas is covered with it. It's a very suggestive medium and less is definitely more. So you have to pull the reins back once you feel like, wow, oh, I could really go crazy with this. As soon as I go pick up this brush, it's all over. Meaning, I can't go back to this bold, juicy stuff. Attacking marks versus, versus this. You know, there's a big difference between that. And, and that painting, darn it, is going to record our, our feelings with every brush stroke, for better or for worse. So I want to make sure that I get some some good positive energy in there early on.
farther along you get in a painting, the tendency is to get play it safe. Because, ooh, it's looking pretty good. I better slow down and be, be careful. That's death to the potential of the painting. The potential that the best paintings that I've done is where I risk it all, even at the last moment where I've got hours invested and it's looking pretty darn good. And then uh, I, I say, you know what, what if, what if I did this? And it's, it's make or break, especially towards the very end. And, and those can be some of the most stunning, stunning paintings. So, and that's where you learn the most too. You, if you do end up with a stinker because of that, boy, I learned a lot. Um, not to not do that again, but don't do that exact thing again. violets, blues for this, like a, you know, you almost want to put the bug repellent off looking at that. But obviously this whole cascading uh, thing is going to be important, uh, and then this uh, horizontal band will kind of stop it all and then lead us off the page gently, just like the water does. Thanks for joining me for another day in Vermont, and we'll see you next time. I'd like to personally invite you to join me for a day in Vermont, a weekly email featuring a brand new painting. As a way to say thanks, I draw two free print winners each month. Please subscribe today. Vermont PBS, partnering with local filmmakers to bring you stories made here. For more, visit vermontpbs.org.